coming up on City Spotlight. Just three episodes left in season seven. We've headed north to Vermilion County and are back on location in Danville. We'll talk for the first time about Danville Area Community College with the president of DAC, Dr. Stephen Nacko. Dr. Nacko will talk about the history of DAC, recent facility updates, and an overview of the academic areas at DAC. We're talking all about Danville Area Community College on this latest episode on Danville, next on City Spotlight. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com. And welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. As you can see, we are on location once again, and we are taping here for our first time at Danville Area Community College for this new episode here on Danville. As we tape here on July 7th, 2021, we're going to talk all about Danville Area Community College in depth here. And to help us out, we welcome first time to the program, the president of Danville Area Community College, Dr. Stephen Nacko. Stephen, pleasure to have you on. Why, thank you. I'm glad to be here, Ramin. Thank you for letting us uh, tape here. We are taping inside Vermilion Hall here in the president's area here at DAC. And so we'll refer to it as DAC for the remainder of the episode to kind of save a few words. Stephen, pleasure to have you on. Look forward to learning all about uh, the, uh, this higher ed uh, facility here in Danville that you lead. Uh, before we talk all about DAC, Stephen, tell us about yourself. Well, my name's Stephen Nacko. I spent my first 60 years of life in the Northeast. Uh, born in Schenectady, New York, upstate New York, then moved to Vermont, then back to New York, then back to Vermont, then back to New York. In fact, eight times between grades one and 12, I moved. Our family moved. I, I used to tell people my father was in the mafia, but he wasn't. He was in the, um, he was a Firestone Tire, and every time he'd get promoted, we, we'd move the family. Then we lived downstate New York, and we lived in Massachusetts for four years. Then we lived in England for three years, wow. and then came back and settled in New Jersey after my father started opening tire stores there. And so that's where I met my wife. Right. And so for really 30 years then, was living and working in New Jersey, but for 13 years working for one of the most interesting companies in the world, New York City Transit Authority, the bus and subway system, oh, wow. PR and marketing. And let me tell you, Ramin, that is some job. You've got 50,000 employees, you've got 7 million passengers, and every day there's mayhem. We would get in front of the media sometimes and say, today we had a good day. We ran over only two people with our buses. So that was, a, so I was there. But then in 2001, just before 9-11, I moved from New York City into a job at my first community college. So I was at Brookdale Community College for nine years. Then I went to another New Jersey college for six years, Union County College. And then one day, my wife was reading the Chronicle of Higher Education. Now, she never reads that. I used to read it and right. keep it in the bathroom where all good bathroom material belongs. Correct. So she was looking it over. She said, hey, what about Danville? Now, she had been grown up in Chicago, right in Chicago. Okay. Her, first, her first 25 years was in Chicago. She went to college in Iowa. So she said, what about applying for a job in Danville, Illinois? Now, we, had, we got married in Homewood, Illinois, just south of Chicago. Right. And we, so we said, yeah, there's a sign there that says Danville. Maybe it's right near Homewood. So I applied. And then I said, so I said to Cindy, my wife, why am I flying to Indianapolis to go to Danville? See, we're geographically challenged. We thought it was near Chicago, <laughs> and it's not. It's two and a half hours south, but then we fell in love with the area. After 60 years of traffic and in-your-face and, and Jersey Shore-type people, it's just been a pleasure to live here in Danville. So I've been here now five years. 
Uh, maybe one of the best introductions anyone has, has given us as far as where they've been, or who they are, and, and how they came about. You kind of answered my next question, Stephen. How did someone from the East Coast end up in Danville? I know that now. What, when you were applying for this position five years ago, what, what impressed you about DAC that made you want to come here? You know, it's, it, the commitment of this community to this college is just something I, I'd never imagined before. When, when I was in New Jersey, and that's where I worked in community colleges, mm -hmm. there, it, community colleges were, were like a, a stepsister to the university. Okay. Here, DAC is, is inextricably linked to the core of this community. People love it. They come out every year, four and five hundred, to help with the national basketball tournament. Everything that goes on in DAC matters to, to this community. There's only 30,000 people in this city, but to them, this is the lifeblood of their city. Uh, we have I, I mean, the highest I'd ever seen in terms of, of market penetration for a, col a community college was 30% at, at Brookdale. Mm -hmm. Here it's 43%. That's anybody who graduates from a high school in, in Vermilion County, 43% of them end up taking classes at DAC or graduating at DAC and coming wow. there. That's an incredible commitment to Almost this one out of two. Almost. It is. It's really high. Unbelievable. Uh, so uh, we talked about uh, DAC briefly our first, on our first episode on Danville with Mayor, uh, Mayor Williams uh, about two years ago. So it's good to be talking in depth about uh, DAC. Um, things got started here about 75 years ago. Tell us about the history of DAC. Well, it's an incredible idea. Every morning when I come in, there's a picture of Mary Miller, and she's our founder. She was a high school teacher in 1946, part of the U of I extension out here, that she would start teaching classes. And it was right after World War II, and she was doing it at the high school. And that was her vision. So every morning when I see her, I say, good morning, Mary, and she says to me, protect my college and don't spend money. So I try to keep, keep that. So when Mary Miller founded it, it became what really amounted to a junior college. And they even changed the name Danville Junior College, which is a college that just transfers. I mean, that was really the whole mission. It would have entrance exams. It would have, you'd look at SATs. And it would be more expensive. But as the community college movement really began to take shape, in the, really in the 70s, mm -hmm. Then, then it transferred, it transitioned into a comprehensive community college. And that's how you have the four pillar mission of a comprehensive community college. So it wasn't just for transfers, it's also career programs. It also became developmental ed, an open door access, which a, a junior college doesn't have, and, and the community ed and, and the corporate education and things like that. So it became a comprehensive community college. At the same time, by in the mid 60s, and this is a great story. Right. Otto Schaefer and, and somebody who really is an iconic figure here by the name of Lou Mervis. He was a, uh, he was a business person, but he also really was a great community leader. He and Otto Schaefer were sitting together in Temple. Otto Schaefer was in charge of the VA here, the Veterans Administration. Correct. And so he, he tapped Lou Mervis on the shoulder and he said, do you think Mary would like a few buildings from the VA? I, I want to I'm going to give them, I would give them over so she could start her college here in, da in Danville at the, at the current location on East Main Street. Right. And Lou then went to Mary and, and Mary said yes. And so in, in 1965, 1965, they began to, to populate this area where it is now on East Main Street, knocked down some of the buildings and retained a lot of the buildings. And so that's how it became Danville Area Community College on this campus. It was still DJC for a while, but then, that, then it became Danville Area as a, as a comprehensive community college. 1979 is when you guys last changed your, your name to Danville Area Community College. Uh, you just mentioned the location here. Uh, obviously, it has, it has served you well and the, the appropriate amount of land. Uh, tell, us, tell us again a little bit, maybe a little bit more about this this particular part of Danville where you guys are located at. It, you said obviously a few buildings and it's evolved from that VA to what it is now. Yes, yeah, the VA passed things, passed some, the buildings and, and land to us. We, we restored some of the buildings, knocked down a bunch of them. You're in a building now that became two additions to it. 
Okay. And the clock tower, which is the iconic building, and you'll see in our logos the big picture of the clock tower, that used to be their mess hall. Okay. And the, the place now that we use for our theater, Bremer Hall, used to be their, their movie theater. Now it's our, it's our actual theater. Okay. There's also a more recent transfer. About eight years ago, the VA gave us a Carnegie Library wow. in, in exchange for a gazebo. In doing that exchange, we've now renovated that Carnegie Library thanks to local philanthropist, the late Julius Hegler, who two years ago, July 5th, passed away. But he really, you'll see his spirit in every corner of this college. Wow. He's helped renovate. His donations have renovated what, what's now we call Jacobs Hall, which is the Carnegie Library, which is now open for business. We just finished that project after two years. He's, he's, he was, it was his funds that rebuilt the technology center where we do welding and CNC machinists, engineering and, and wind technology. We're the only community college that does wind tech program, solar and wind. He, he also, the Garden Gateway, when you first came in, this beautiful archway mm -hmm. that, that welcomes students. Right. He, he's also, his donation renovated the horticulture center the, or, the, the greenhouse, right. and most recently, posthumously, his donation has helped us transform what was a U.S. Army Reserve on the northeast corner of this campus to become our new Center for Healthcare um, Professions. So by next fall, the plan is to move all of our nursing program over there and really double the number of nurses that we have in an articulation program with our friends at EIU. It's a wonderful program and it'll mean we'll have more feeder nursing grads to, to have them complete their degree at EIU. Fantastic. I think you kind of answered my next question about some of the recent work that has taken place here on the campus as far as facility changes and evolving and obviously you you're told me before we started taping, very happy and proud about the work done at Jacobs Hall. So congratulations on that. Uh, you have an additional location, as is the case with several community colleges, you have an additional location uh, of the campus in Hoopston. We have a Hoopston Center on 2nd second, second Avenue in Hoopston. It was, uh, it was in the, like around tw 2014, it officially began operations. Carla Kuhn is our director there, and it works really hand in glove with, with Hoopston Area High School because a lot of dual credit going on there where it's either at the high school or in, in our center there Correct. to help students graduate. You know, I'm just, just as a sidebar to that, this year we had seven students in this county who graduated with DAC associate degrees and high school degrees the same week. We had over 40 students who have at least one year of college as they graduated high school. So the dual court credit program is alive and well here in Vermilion County at levels I've never seen wow. in any place I had ever worked. Tell us about who you serve. Obviously, you're located, Danville's located uh, East Central Illinois. You're obviously located near the Indiana border. So what is the, the chief area that you guys target as far as the students that come here? Well, it's, it's District 507 is all of Vermilion County mm -hmm. and little slices of Edgar, Ford, Champaign, mm -hmm and Iroquois counties. Right. So, I mean, Milford High School up in Iroquois. That's up there. In fact, but, you know, but as we can help them with the Hoopston Center and also sending faculty into their school, Correct. we can get there because it is too far really for them to drive. And the Hoopston, Hoopston Center obviously being on the north end of Vermont, it would, it would help them with that. And, we're, and the same with Georgetown at the south. That's really the extreme south part. So right. we, we're, right now we're working out, at, we're going to have day classes on, in, the, in their high school to help them, really the students there, to do dual credit. Now we also have seven contiguous Indiana counties okay. that aren't officially the Illinois part of District 507, right. but they, we have agreements with those seven um, that don't really feel as if they get enough service out of the, the, let's say, the monolithic system that operates in Indiana. So what we do there is we, we have special discounts for them and, and many of the students in, in counties like Vermilion with two L's yes. and some of those other counties, they're also involved with us. Okay, very good. 
All right, so that's the students that you kind of have coming here to DAC. What's your, what's your current enrollment? What's your most recent enrollment number? Well, we, we, had, we had the worst enrollment I've ever seen in my life in the spring, where, where enrollment dropped related to just really COVID fatigue. And what we had to do was change the way we were. We, we learned that, that changing the way we taught, we couldn't assume that it, traditional age students, as wired as they are with phones and stuff like that, really did not handle our, uh, any, our online education well. It's not just our lesson. A lot of institutions learn that. So what we, we did was we started the spring semester with synchronous, like Zoom-style teaching for face-to-face. -face. Then in the middle of the, the semester, when we became the first community college out of the 48 to have everybody offer the opportunity for vaccinations in early February. Wow. When that happened, then we could go face-to-face -face in March. So that helped retain students. But enrollment, uh, general, if you want, general population is about 5,000 students. Right. But enrollment dropped by a, a double digits by about 15%, and I've never seen that before. And it was mainly students who just couldn't persist. So now, to counterbalance that, number one is for the fall, we're going to run the fall as if it were party as if it's 2019. It's going to be <laughs> regular in-person classes as if it were 2019 again. The schedule's going to look the way it used to look. Correct. before we started to chop it up. Because we were running classes with a cap, maximum cap, caps at 10. Right. Now we'll be back to 24 and we'll okay. be back to running regular day sections. All right, so that's a look ahead to the fall. If we had more time on this first episode, we talked more in detail about how, how DAC kind of navigated through COVID, but thank you for that kind of look into the future. Um, I know that community colleges and most higher eds are, are very proud of accreditation and that process. Tell us about some of your accredited programs you have here at DAC. Well, we, we accreditation with the Higher Learning Commission, we earned accreditation in 2019. Correct. That was the overall college. Right. What we have in terms of our accreditation for ASIN for our nursing program, so we have an accredited nursing program, mm -hmm. that really helps us with our partners like EIU and because we have a, what we call a, is a dual admission program right. where students can join our program simultaneously with the EIU program right. and then it's a seamless path from associate degree, the RN, uh, passing the NCLEX and then continue, f complete the bachelor's with you, right. you know, with EIU. We also have um, accreditation in rad tech, radiation technology, echocardiography, sonography, wow. uh, health information technology. So all of these require, you know, there, there's site visits like everything else, and they right. come and look at what makes us accredited, what keeps our accreditation. All right, I think seamlessly moving along in my questions, tell us about your acad academic divisions you have here at DAC. Well, in academics for credit, there, there are three divisions, liberal arts, and library studies. The liberal arts is pretty much um, the cottage industry here is, is in criminal justice, so they do really well there. Also have um, a, a robust art department and culinary department under that. The, the technology and the business and technology department has a business accounting. We have new articulation for accounting that leads to a uh, you can sit for a CPA with a bachelor's degree with a, an alliance we have with Indiana. Mm -hmm. We hope to get the similar one going with EIU as an example right. because people need that. The technology part is really um, the double-edged. One is in engineering and, and network, computer network and programming, there's a high demand for jobs but it's also really career and tech programs. And you'll find them in our Hegler Technology Center, and that's re um, welding. We can't produce enough welders for the 34 local manufacturers in this area. Um, CNC machinists, um, the, whether they're, they're working lathes or they're doing anything on the CAD machine to create something and fabricate in, in, in um, mechatronics, and, and manufacturing, wow. there again, students in those programs automatically with jobs, and we just 
can't produce enough to meet the demand here. Uh, tractor trailer drivers, that's another one. Right. Advanced, advanced um, technology in wind technology and solar. There again, that's, we're, we're the only acting around in community colleges and as they build wind farms in this area, including the one that's just in, they're built, going to build in the Georgetown area, right. that's also something where, where the companies that are involved in that have already contacted us to try to start a pipeline for students. So those are the chief ones there. And, and the, also within that is horticulture. Mm -hmm. We even have a pot growing class. We don't call it that, we call it cultivation. Right. And we don't really grow marijuana on campus, but. understand. And then, and then really the, the marquee programs are in, in our math, science, and healthcare professions. That's nursing is the biggest one. There's probably about 500 students every year who want to join the pipeline, wow. but we produce only about 40 a year because it is, it's extremely competitive. So they talk about open, com, open access community college, but that is not open. I mean, it's, it, you have to be the best to get through this program. And, and echocardiography, sonography, health in, information technology, those are other one, parts of that, along with math, physics, and, and, en, and engineering is the other one. Any of our engineering students, these local companies will cut an arm off. They, in fact, they'll say, if you bring us an engineering associate, we'll pay for their bachelors. We don't care, wherever they want to go. So. Very good. You mentioned uh, the many career and development options. I think you were kind of just talking, leading into that, and you told me something before we started taping. The number of manufacturers that you have in a small radius to DAC uh, is impressive. The opportunities for folks to utilize them to be able to grow. So talk about the number of manufacturers that you have locally. Well, when I left New Jersey, I mean, we left a bunch of empty factories. I mean, when Barack Obama started the Trade Adjustment Act, that was for all of the, the manufacturers jobs that were lost overseas. When I came here, this was another one of the things that just had my jaw drop when I came to Danville, was seeing these manufacturers alive and well. They talked about GM leaving in 1980, right. but these very cool companies that have taken the places, places like Watchfire, ThyssenKrupp Presta, ViscoFan, right. Kick, I mean these are companies, Arconic, they're all here, which is Alcoa. You go into these places and it's state-of-the-art stuff. Right. This isn't Dickensian factories where little kids' heads get crushed in gears. These are, these are high-tech manufacturers and the people there need great skills. They're not grunts jamming uh, bolts into holes. They're doing really amazing work. So what do we do here to, to support them? Well, a comprehensive community college has an obligation to support local manufacturing. And our corporate education is at a level here I've never seen where Stephanie Yates and her staff go to these companies, whatever they need, whatever training they need on site, they do that. And it's, um, it's, it benefits the community. And it also reminds me of why I love working at community college. I don't think we could end the interview any better. We're kind of out of time. So Dr. Stephen Nacko, the president of Danville Area Community College, thank you for being on City Spotlight and sharing all that DAC is about and how it helps serve the community. Thank you. Why, thank you, Ramin. It's been a pleasure. And that'll do it for this latest City Spotlight episode on Danville. As we close this episode, let's take a look at some of the upcoming activities going on in Danville. Thank you for tuning in to City Spotlight. You can check out past episodes, including the one you're watching right now on YouTube. To check out recent episodes of Central and Southeastern Illinois towns featured on City Spotlight, search on YouTube, City Spotlight, with the show number and the name of the town. Listed on your screen are the last five episodes of City Spotlight. 
City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.